Which 4K mirrorless system is better, the Panasonic Lumix GH5 or the Nikon Z6? In this video, we're gonna put those two cameras head to head to the test. We're gonna go through all of the specs and compare the photo qualities, the video qualities, the features, and see which of those two cameras is better. So let's get right into the comparison of the GH5 and the Z6. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, I'm JT, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you're getting all of my new videos. So today, we're comparing the Nikon Z6, which I have here in my hands, and we're shooting this video on the Panasonic GH5. So both are great camera systems, both are mirrorless, both shoot 4K. So we're gonna go through and compare the strengths and the weaknesses of both these cameras, and hopefully at the end we'll figure out which camera is better and if you're looking to buy one of these cameras which camera is best for you so these cameras are first and foremost photo cameras so let's talk about that first we have the gh5 which is a micro four third sensor which is quite a bit smaller than the nikon z6 which is a full frame and that full frame does tend to let a little bit more light in so when it comes to low light the z6 does have a little bit of an advantage over the GH5, it also has a 24 megapixel sensor and the GH5 only has a 20-ish megapixel sensor. They're pretty close, but again, the Z6 does have that little bit of an edge. So let's talk about low light quality and shooting with higher ISOs. We're gonna do some photo tests here in a minute so you can see side by side what the GH5 and what the Nikon Z6 photos look like. But when it comes to ISO, the GH5 has a range from 200 to 25,600 and that is expandable down to ISO 100 on the GH5. On the Z6 you have an ISO range from 100 to 51,000 and that's expandable down to 50 ISO and then all the way up to 200,000 plus ISO which I will never use that and the image quality out of that probably unusable Again, I would never use it for anything, so I just kind of forget about those extended ISOs for the most part. Both the GH5 and the Z6 have five axis sensor stabilization, which is awesome. Now, I personally like the GH5 stabilization a little bit better, especially when it comes to shooting video. It just seems a lot more stable. Your lens stabilization works in conjunction with your sensor just to make an extremely smooth image. And I do a lot of shooting on the GH5 completely handheld just because of the awesome stabilization. So I'm gonna give the point to the GH5 when it comes to that stabilization integration between the lens and the sensor. Now, when it comes to shooting full resolution and using your whole sensor, both of these cameras can shoot up to 12 frames per second. So that's pretty great when it comes to sports or any sort of fast-paced action. Like you guys all know, I shoot fast-paced military action. and I mostly use the Z6 for that, but again, both are great for those fast frame rates. So now that we've talked about the specs a little bit, let's actually take a look at some photos from the GH5 and from the Z6. Now, what I did to make this test as fair as possible, which was pretty difficult because of the differing sensor sizes, I put 50 millimeter 1.4 Nikon lenses on both. I put one on the GH5 with my photo deox adapter, and then I put one on the Z6, which has the FTZ adapter, but exact same lens. I just had to play around with distance because obviously the micro four thirds crops in quite a bit, and it turns a 50 millimeter lens into about a 100 millimeter equivalent. So there is that difference, but I tried to be as fair as possible in this test. So let's take a look at some of these photos. Thank you. 
So those were the photos from the Z6 and the GH5, that little comparison I did. It was a pretty simple comparison, but I've noticed in most cases, the Z6 does tend to outshine the GH5 when it comes to plain and simple photo quality. The Z6 does have that advantage of the full frame 35 millimeter sensor, and you're just getting physically more light onto your sensor. So when it comes to photo, the Z6 definitely is a step above the Panasonic GH5. The photo quality out of this is just great. Now that's not to say I haven't taken some great photos with my GH5, I definitely have, but this guy for the most part is what I'm gonna go to when I need a photo job done. So let's get into video. These guys shoot ultra high definition video or 4K. They're mirrorless, which makes them absolutely fantastic for shooting video. And both of them have amazing video quality. So the GH5 shoots ultra high definition and then cinema 4K, which essentially is 4096 pixels wide, which is about 300 pixels wider than just regular 4K. And the Z6 just shoots ultra high definition 4K. Now, when it comes to frame rates, I do have to check out my list right here. When you're shooting 4K, the GH5 shoots your standard frame rates, 23.96, 24, 25, 30 frames per second, but the GH5 does shoot 60 frames per second at 4K, which is fantastic and gives you that extremely slow-mo cinematic footage. Whereas the Z6 only shoots your kind of lower standard frame rates like 24, 25, and 30. And you can't really slow down 30 frames per second all that much with the Z6. Now, when you're shooting just HD 1920 by 1080, the Z6 can bump the frame rate up to 120, and it still looks pretty darn good, but the GH5 can shoot 180 frames per second at full HD. An additional thing that's really nice about the GH5, and I absolutely love this, it has a variable frame rate scale. So I have the option, in addition to shooting 60 frames per second, I can also pick 40 frames per second or anything in between there, which is a huge advantage. I also have the option of changing the variable bit rate anywhere from about 150 megabits per second to 400 megabits per second, which is a huge file but the video quality is absolutely fantastic. And that's not something I have with the Z6. Now, both of these cameras do have HDMI out, which is great. You can use an external recorder with both of them. And both of these cameras can shoot 10-bit footage. The only downside with the Z6 is you have to shoot HDMI out onto another recorder. And that means, you know, more money that you're spending on a ninja recorder or something like that that has an HDMI in and extra memory and all that stuff. Whereas the GH5 does have the option of 10-bit 422 color space right onto your SD cards, which is fantastic. I don't have to buy another recorder. I don't have to buy more memory, more batteries, anything like that. I can shoot that fantastic quality 10-bit, great for color grading 422 right onto my dual SD cards. So when it comes to video and putting the video head to head, well, let's take a look at the video footage and we'll see what you guys think first. So after looking at that video, the Z6 really performs fantastic in low light. And I kind of knew that was gonna happen because again, the photo quality on the Z6 was just awesome. That high ISO, low noise performance, I'm getting usable footage at extremely high ISOs, 
but I have to be careful with the Panasonic GH5. Once I start really cranking that ISO above, you know, 3200, 6400, I get some big chunky grain. But remember again, if you're lighting your scene properly, this isn't as much something that you really need to be worrying about. You probably won't really ever be shooting above like 3200 ISO. I'm really pushing it when I shoot 1600 ISO. So comparing all the specs and comparing what the video quality looks like, it's really a toss up. The Z6 really looks fantastic. But that one thing that really keeps me from just buying a bunch of Z6s and getting rid of my GH5 is that 4K60. That's something that would just make this guy a killer. So Nikon, if you're listening and you can do some sort of firmware upgrade and give me 60 frames per second at 4K with this, we'd be talking. So we've compared photo, we've compared video. Let's talk about some of the other features that might make a difference when you're purchasing either a GH5 or a Nikon Z6. Now, one of the big things, especially if you're vlogging like I do or creating YouTube videos, my GH5 has a fully articulating LCD screen. So I'm looking at myself right now on the LCD screen as I watch this video. I can flip it around, do whatever I want to. And the Z6, um, well, I can flip this guy and I can, you know, tilt it out a little bit, which helps if I'm, you know, shooting a Hail Mary shot or I have it on the ground, but I can't flip this guy out. I can't vlog with it. Um, that's really a limitation. That's another thing that's been keeping me back from buying a second Z6. So the GH5 definitely does have that advantage with the fully articulating LCD screen. Now let's talk just for a second about memory. The Z6 has one XQD slot. I know a lot of people have huge issues with that. I know especially wedding photographers like to shoot to two cards and have one as a backup just in case. And the XQDs are pretty expensive, whereas the GH5 has two SD card slots. And I usually throw two 128 gig cards, which are fairly fast read write speed so I can shoot those high bit rates. But it's great to have all of that space all of that backup. I usually shoot photos to one card, video to another card, but it's great just to have that extra spare card. But I don't necessarily see it as a huge problem to having one card slot. I carry plenty of cards with me and I've never in my life had an issue with a card going corrupt in the camera and just losing all of my footage. So that's a decision that's up to you. Do you feel safe just shooting on one card or do you like having that backup like the GH5 has that second card slot? Now, one of the last things I want to talk about are the adapters. As you could see in the video earlier, when I threw that 50 millimeter Nikon Nifty 50 on my GH5, I had to use a photo deox adapter. I do have a review on that. I'll put it down in the description if you want to check it out. But that's how I shoot Nikon lenses on my Panasonic GH5. And speaking of those adapters, I actually have to have an adapter on this guy as well so that I can shoot with all of my Nikon glass, that is my F mounts. The Nikon Z actually has a Z mount, which is a whole new line of lenses that Nikon's coming out with, but I don't wanna buy all new lenses right now. The Nikon glass that I have is great. This is my 14 millimeter prime, which I absolutely love. And I don't think they have a Z 14 millimeter prime right now. So I love using old glass, it saves me money. I already have it, the quality's great but I do have to have this FTZ adapter, which adds just about the same amount of length as the Photo Deox adapter. But the nice thing is, unlike the Photo Deox adapter, the FTZ does have autofocus aperture. It's a smart adapter. My FTZ, it's a dumb adapter. I have to manual focus my Nikon lenses, but it does have a completely declicked, nice smooth aperture ring control on that. So great for shooting video not as great for shooting, let's say sports, if I wanna shoot my Nikon lenses. So before we wrap this video up, let's talk about pricing and a holistic conclusion. I can get a GH5 right now on Amazon and I'll have the links down below in the description if you wanna pick up yours for about $1,400 and that's just the body alone. The Nikon Z6 runs about 1850 and that does include the 200-ish dollar FTZ adapter. So both of these cameras are absolutely great. Like I said, I've shot great video 
on the Z6. I've shot great video on the GH5, and I've also shot great photos on each. So when it comes to photo quality, the Z6 does kind of come out on top. Now, when it comes to video, I do think the Lumix GH5 has a little bit of an advantage that 60 frames per second, that 10-bit 422 straight to the dual SD cards, that is a killer right there, not having to HDMI out to a separate like Ninja monitor. That is absolutely awesome when it comes to the GH5. When you start getting up into those super high ISOs, the Z6 does start to shine, but again, you're limited with those frame rates. So it's really up to you. Both of these are great cameras. Even in 2020, these guys are shining in the market right now. And I would be happy, and I am happy, with either one of these. I'm happy with both of these cameras. Let me know down below in the comments, do you have a Z6 or a GH5? Which one do you think is better? And which one are you thinking about buying if you're in the market for a new camera? So that's all for this video. Thank you guys for watching my review of the GH5 and the Z6. I hope you guys learned something. If you did, give me a like and share this video with a friend that may be looking for a new 4K mirrorless camera. And until next time, get out and go shoot.